What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. But first, I'd like to give a special thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. Storyblocks is a stock library that allows you to use demand-driven assets like video, audio, and images for personal or professional use. They have a growing 1 million plus high quality assets so you can choose the perfect clip to make video transitions and effects. They have a popular unlimited all access plan that allows you to make unlimited downloads of anything from their library. Whether you need to find the perfect asset or if you're working on a time sensitive project, look no further. Their library is always growing so you can get access to HD and 4K footage, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, music tracks, sound effects, and much more. You can browse the monthly spotlight to get inspired by new videos added every month as well. To add to that, Storyblocks is taking your feedback with their restock initiative. When they started their restock initiative, only 5% of their footage contained mostly non-white models, so they decided to make a change by hiring creators from these underrepresented communities to create stock footage for their library. Storyblocks is pledging to increase their stock footage with black, indigenous, and people of color communities to 20% of their stock footage by 2022. On top of that, a new set of collections called Queer Spaces and Faces of six LGBTQIA filmmakers is now available in their library. I believe this is a great stepping stone in moving towards the right direction for those who haven't had the chance at the spotlight. Go to storyblocks.com slash kingtutspro to learn more. All right, so what you want to do first is, of course, have your video imported into the uh, project window. And you can see that these two clips I actually got from Storyblocks, which is from our sponsor today. And you're going to see we have this one, which is a shot of, I think, Houston. And then the next shot here we also got from Storyblocks. This is, again, kind of a different scene, but we're also still on the, on the freeway. And that's kind of the effect that we want. We kind of want to draw in the viewer to know that this is gonna be more of a kind of like an establishing shot. Really cool shot of this BMW E90 series. I really like this shot here because we have this pillar over here and that can be used as a transition or as an effect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click and drag the first clip into the timeline. I'm gonna drag the second clip just like so. And this is the way I like to edit or lay out my clips in the timeline. If I push play, this is the normal speed, no color correction or color grading. This is all stock footage, by the way. First, start this off with a speed ramp. To access the speed ramp, select your video and press Command R. And this will bring up the retiming options with a green bar above your video. If you click the down arrow, you have more options for slowing down your video, going to 50%. If I click this, this will slow the video down to 50% or half the speed. If I go down again and choose 25% of the speed, which is even slower, and 10% of that speed, which will be very slow. What we're gonna do is though, you're gonna see a little black line and this will allow you to you know, shorten the video or you can extend it outwards to the right to make it slower. Here's where I wanna make my first cut. So in order to do that, we're gonna press Shift B and this will make our first cut. Press Shift B and I'm gonna click and drag this to the left now and you're gonna see it's speeding up and these dark areas are pretty much the fade in transitions almost if you were to call it that. So it just shows you how smooth it's going to transition into this speed ramp. So if I push play, it's gonna start off kind of normal speed. It's gonna speed up again until it ends. From there, I'm going to cut it about here. I don't want it to be too long. So it's gonna speed up, slow down, go about shift B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push play, normal speed, shift B. I'm gonna make this go a lot faster. I'm gonna press shift B again and make this one go quicker here as well. So if I push play, and then I'm gonna cut this right there. I think it's fine. It's gonna kind of go on to this clip. I want to create a uh, kind of a luma key transition or a luma fade transition. So in order to add that, what we can do is go into the effects, go down to keying and go to luma keyer and add that on top of the third clip or whatever clip you're gonna be using. And you're gonna see now that we have a luma keyer. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and drag this clip above this clip here. We're gonna click and drag the shadows over to the highlights. So ignore the whatever artifacts are left. That's totally fine. We're gonna add a key, a keyframe next to mix, keyframe next to the actual Luma. Then go a couple of frames inwards. So we're gonna go one frame to the left, and we're gonna drag the highlights over back to the shadows, as well as the top. So something like that. It should look something like this. Now at the beginning, you can see some artifacts. So we can, of course go into transitions, add a cross dissolve to that, delete the end transition, and just kind of make this one very subtle, something like that, so I push play. It'll kind of transition like that. So in order to move the bottom clips, because it's using a magnetic timeline, Final Cut Pro 10 is like that, so we can go into the solids, custom, just drag that in between this clip there. 
then you can move these clips right above like that. Could delete that and then move this one over. And I want this to kind of speed up as well. So I'm gonna push play. I want this to speed up again. So press command R, shift B. And I'm gonna go about here's where I want it to kind of fade off. So shift B. And we're gonna move this piece over to the left. So if I push play, it's gonna do something like that. Maybe that's a little too fast. So something like that. And then again, shift B, go about halfway in between this clip, shift B, and then click and drag and move this one over to the left. You can kind of cut this piece off. I'm gonna use the beginning of this shot here as a transition. So go to the top, go to edit, go to add freeze frame, and your freeze frame should be over here somewhere. It moves it randomly in the timeline, which is really annoying, but click and drag this right above your media. So they should be right above. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the effects, we're gonna go into masks, Go to draw mask and add a draw mask onto that. We're just gonna click to select the pillar here. Okay, so it looks something like that. And we can disable the bottom clip by pressing V, select the top clip. And what I'm gonna do is you can feather this outwards or inwards. I'm gonna feather this inwards to create a soft edge. Select the bottom clip, press V to re-enable it. And now it's a steel image as you can see. So from this point, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move this to the left. So as this is speeding up, it's also gonna slow down or go back to the normal speed. And in between these couple of frames is where we're gonna create that kind of effect. So we're gonna trim this, go to transform, go to the Y axis, make sure this is at the beginning. We're gonna start this off screen, add a keyframe and go to the end of that clip, type in zero. So now if I push play, it'll look something like this. Super clean and it kind of creates more of an interesting transition shot to the next shot. Press command R, shift B, this is where I want my next effect to begin. This one I want to start off quick. So I'm actually going to start this off about here. Shift B and I'm gonna make this one go a lot quicker to, at the beginning. So if I push play and from there, I'm gonna press Shift B and we'll go about here and press Shift B as well. Select the middle clip and drag this one to the left to make this one fast. So if I push play from the beginning, this is what we have so far. Okay, from there, I'm actually gonna trim it there. I think that's a perfect spot. This shot is going the other way, as you can see, which doesn't make sense. Now, we can leave it like this, but you know, when you're filming this, you want it to be all uh, the same movement, if, that, if possible. We're gonna scale this up, and what I wanna do is make sure the wheel is centered in between this frame. Now, you probably don't know where the center is. So you can click View and go to Show Horizon, and this will show you exactly where this is so about here i think that looks good now you can zoom up a little bit more i think that looks good in terms of scale so once we're there negative 240 for the scale scale x and we're going to move this back to the center point so now if i push play it'll play the same direction as this one here because the video is not centered or the wheel's not centered to that center piece on that frame we're gonna have to create some keyframes to keep it there so we're gonna add a keyframe and we're gonna Press shift right on the arrow key to skip some frames and make sure that this is in fact centered. Perfect. So now if I kind of go back, you're going to see now it's perfectly centered on that axis point. And it also creates almost like a locked on effect. What we're going to do is we want to kind of transition this. Select the clip before that. We're going to go into the effects. We're gonna go to blur and we're gonna add a radial blur. Now you're probably thinking radial blur as a transition, that's kind of weird and it is. So we're gonna drag this one here and you're gonna see that we can create a really quick and easy transition that a lot of people don't know and haven't used before. I haven't seen this done before. So we're gonna decrease the amount or increase it depending on what effect you want it to look like. I want it to look like this. Now we're gonna go into center and we're gonna move this, kind of shift this off center. We're gonna start this off here. So if I push play, I want it to last not too long. With these settings applied at this location or this spot in the timeline, so we're going to start this off with zero. We're going to add a keyframe. We're going to go to the end of that frame and we're going to type in 24. Press enter. So now if I push play, it'll look something like this. Now this also needs to have a transition there. So we're going to go back to the effects blur, radio blur, and add that there again. We just gotta make sure it's the same path. So we're just gonna change the way this is angled. So this one, in this case, it's angled like that. So that's perfect. So from there, we're gonna add a keyframe now. 
we're gonna go a couple of frames in about here, maybe there, and then just move the amount to zero. So now if I push play, it creates a very smooth blur transition like that. No presets or plugins required. Now, once we're there, what we're gonna do is it's gonna kind of transition and we can now hide this uh, horizon line uh, edit, add a freeze frame. This will create a stale image as you can see, so it'll play and it'll stop. And once we're there, what we're gonna do is hold option, drag upwards, then we're gonna go to effects, we're gonna go to masks, and we're gonna add a shape mask to the top freeze frame. We're gonna change the radius, make it smaller. We're gonna zoom in. And from this point, we're gonna change the curvature, make this as round as possible. And I'm gonna make the size smaller make it a little bit more round. Now the outer edge is controlling the feather. So this is how soft that edge will be. If you drag it outwards, it's gonna be very soft. I want it to be about here, you know, if, if possible. And then, so once you're there, uh, if I disable the bottom clip, you're gonna see it now, it just selected the logo. And what I wanna do is I want to make this spin. Under transform, you're gonna see that if we move this, now it's spinning, which is really cool. So we're gonna add a keyframe here and we're gonna have this play through a little bit about here maybe. And we're gonna just drag the rotation quite a bit. So if I push play, it's just gonna be spinning. So once you're here, it's gonna stop and we can of course press B, disable it, select the top clip and hit invert mask. And we're gonna reset the actual rotation under transform because it's you know spinning. So we're gonna hit back to fit. We're gonna pretty much zoom this up. So we're gonna hit uh, next to scale all, we're gonna add a keyframe. You can choose how long you want this to B, so I want this to last about here maybe, and maybe less. And I'm gonna scale this all the way up as far as we can till we can't see those edges. So then if I push play, it'll look like that. That's a little too fast. So we're gonna hit show video animation. We're gonna start this off like that. We're gonna just delete the last clip here because we don't need it. We can trim this as well. Because this is just showing through and we're gonna have to make sure that this is also not showing. Uh, so this should be completely see-through and you can test that by just dragging a video clip, such as the first one underneath. So you can see now it's showing through the video, which is what we want. So we can now delete this and make sure nothing is underneath it. We're gonna select everything in the timeline. We're gonna group this and we're gonna name this final group. All you gotta do now is just make a copy. So hold option and drag it downwards. And once you drag this video downwards, move it to where the wheel hub stops spinning. We're gonna bring the scale down and right about here is where I want my next frame to be. So make sure you add a keyframe next to scale. And then the second frame where it zooms up again, we're gonna bring this up, press right on the arrow key, zoom this up again. And we're gonna go back to fit, press right on the arrow key. Now, once you're at 100% scale, you can, of course, you know, leave it like this. If I push play, you can do something like that if you don't want it to keep, you know, getting bigger in terms of scale. Now, if I push play, it'll look something like that. It's a lot smoother in my opinion. And now this will create an infinite loop. So it's starting like this. It's gonna play through. Of course, you would add your music, it creates a luma fade transition. You have that freeze frame effect, speeds up, creates a transition spins, zooms up, and repeats all over again. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video like this. Until then, peace out.